Here we go with Hey Bobby, Senior VP of the Cleveland Guardians. Bob DiBiasio joins us each week here on, on WAKR Facebook page, YouTube channel, WAKR.net. and appreciate his time with us. Bobby, through the years, we've had a lot of really good closers that sometimes we forget about from the from the Wickmans and the Kearns and the Maces. You can even go back to Dave LaRoche, who did a really good job of closing for us. But when you talk about closers with you, uh, what stands out to you when you talk about closers in Cleveland baseball history and the closers uh, that stand out? Maybe some thoughts from you on the closers. Well, you know, when you posed that to me, one of the questions that I had was, do you rank closers specifically by the number of saves that they um, produced? And I guess that would probably be um, the number one category, of course, the number one stat that you would judge a, a closer by. But um, as I uh, looked it up, did you know that the save, interestingly, was not a stat until 1969, and it was the first new stat in Major League Baseball since 1920? Wow. <laughs> isn't, that amazing, that. isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I forgot about that, so when I looked it up. So you start naming names, so the first – basic closer in the history of our franchise was Ray Narleski in the 50s. Um, the, you know, uh, great teams of the 50s had Ray Narleski and Don Mossy. Mossy was pretty much the um, eighth inning guy and Ray Narleski came in. I think he, if credited, and you go back and, and look at the, the games, he might have had 58 saves or something like that total. Um, but uh um, our first real closer uh, Doug Jones, uh, the late time all star uh, 88, 89 and 90 for us. Uh, um, and when I looked double checked um, some stats on 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 Doug that um, there's a stat that I have no idea what it means, but, it's uh, um, B, lowercase b, and then capital W-A-R. So B, war. Um, people who are watching this may under may know that the stat war wins above replacement. I have no idea what the, the little <laughs> B in front of it means. But um, they say that Doug Jones, uh, of all the closers in the history of our franchise, had the highest B war. So he would be considered the best and most efficient closer um, in franchise history, if you do that. Then we had Steve Olin, and then when he just was rounding into form as a, a pre preeminent um, closer, sadly, the tragedy that happened in the boating accident uh, in Winter Haven, Florida. Uh, and then we went searching um, for about three, four years for a closer, and then Jose Mesa comes along and has one of the greatest years in, in the history of our franchise with 46 saves and 48 opportunities in 95. And then Mike Jackson has uh, 40 saves one year and then 39 the next in 98, 99. Uh, Bob Wickman, who uh, would put you on the edge of your seat, um, <clears throat> you know, had 139 saves. So he moved to the top of the uh, the franchise all-time saves leader list uh, for a brief period. And um, Joe Borowski, uh, Chris Perez, those kind of guys uh, filled in there. And then we get to the the, the, the top of the chart. Uh, uh, Cody Allen still ranks number one all-time um, with 149 saves. Uh, Wickman is second with 139. Doug Jones third at 129. Uh, Chris Perez, believe it or not, at 124. Now, yeah. Emmanuel Classe has a chance to blow everybody away. Um, we have him signed with team options through 2027 and 2028. Um, 
so there's a chance. Right now, he has a total of 121. He went into the season with 110 and has 11 saves thus far in the infancy of this baseball season. So he's at uh, 121. You know, he's the only man in the history of our franchise to have 40 uh, saves in back-to-back -back season. Mike Jackson had 40 and 39. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, Emmanuel has led the major leagues in saves two years in a row, had 42 and 22 and uh, 44 last year. So uh, um, I think Emmanuel has a chance to uh, uh, get to the top of that list and blow everybody away. Who did you feel most confident? I, obviously, probably Mesa, right? He was so effective. I know that would be my choice of when he came to the mound, you felt that it was in the hopper there for the win. Was it you with Jose Mesa, Bob? Well, in that season in 95, for sure. And in 96 and 7, he was just terrific. Uh, um, as I said, they were searching. Um, I remember... Um, John Hart, Danny O'Dell, Mike Hargrove, you know, meeting regularly during that spring training in Winter Haven. And the topic of discussion was who's going to be our closer because Mesa came to us as a starter. And they ended up deciding, well, he had the best stuff. He had a couple pitches. He was a strike thrower, could big, strong guy who could really, and John Hart absolutely loved power arms in his bullpen. And when they ended up making the decision that uh, Jose was the guy, um, that obviously changed uh, everything for us uh, uh, as we became a perennial division um, title winner and postseason October baseball club. And um, and it's amazing because you look at Emmanuel Class A throwing 100, 101 and a 99 mile an hour cutter, Jose Mesa, high 90s. Then you had Doug Jones, who earlier I mentioned that that B war stat has him ranked the most efficient, and he did it with a changeup. Yeah, and everybody knew he was throwing a changeup, and uh, he had the biggest hands you ever saw that just engulfed a baseball. And uh, he always told me though that you didn't need big hands. I asked him that a number of times. Um, to throw an effective uh, changeup, did you really have to smother the ball in your hands? And he said, no, uh, uh, you know, it's all about relaxing your hand when you let it go. And then having a, I don't care attitude about what happens to the ball after it leaves my hand, which it was typical Doug Jones, you know, yeah. he goes, there's a sense of being a closer that it, it'll, it'll eat you alive. That job, I happen to believe the closer role is the hardest job in all of professional sports because your team has battled for two and a half plus hours. And in one pitch, you can have a game go sideways and you have to walk into that clubhouse where there's no music being played. It's silent. You got to go home and sleep on it. That you just cause the loss and then come back the next day ready to climb the mountain and be the best there is. And so I just think it's the toughest job there is in professional sports. And um, Doug said to be able to live through all that, you had to have a I don't care, a little bit of an I don't care what happens attitude once that ball leaves your hand. Senior VP with the Cleveland <laughs> Guardians, Bob DiBiase here with us on Hey Bobby here on WAKN. That is a perfect transition into the second half of the show today, Bobby. And I wanted to go stay with that 90s team when you were talking about Mesa. And legitimacy, I always thought, is the word. When we went out, because the hitters were coming, the young hitters, we were scoring runs. But when we went out and got Dennis Martinez, all of a sudden, everyone around baseball is looking and saying, they mean business. And I don't know if you felt that way. I did in the media at that time. And uh, Dennis Martinez is celebrating birthday number 69 this week. And I thought maybe you could reflect a little bit of when the organization made the commitment and went after Dennis Martinez, who was the ace of this staff and had so much good pitching behind him and in front of him. Talk about the acquisition of Dennis Martinez and what it meant to us. 
when you say that it brought legitimacy to uh, uh, this franchise, uh, the I think the most significant moment in our franchise history was the the building of Jacobs Field. Um, Dick Jacobs moving us out of Cleveland Stadium as a tenant, and then all of a sudden we move into a beautiful baseball-only ballpark on the southern edge of downtown to help revitalize, along with the Cavaliers, um, that whole condemned region of the southern edge of downtown. Um, we had a have to tell you, Ray, we had a, a long discussion, Dick Jacobs and John Hart, myself, Danny O'Dowd, um, discussed when do we announce, announce the, the free agent signing of Dennis Martinez and Eddie Murray, yeah. um, if you remember. That was the two of them really uh, together um, put a stamp that this team moving into a brand new building was ready to compete uh, for October baseball with some consistency. Um, and they, I, I remember Dick Jacobs grilling me about, do we do Dennis Martinez on one day and then save Eddie Murray for two weeks later? So we build this, or is it better that we bring both of them in at once and just smack everybody in the face that we're serious about, you know, winning baseball as we move into um, this new ballpark of ours. And, you know, I was a believer that let's bring both of them in at once and just show everybody um, this grand statement by the owner of the baseball team that uh, Dennis Martinez and Eddie Murray are, uh, are going to be Cleveland Indians. And so we went with that. Um, anytime, Ray, that <laughs> Hear the name Dennis Martinez. There's just a couple things I, I immediately think about. He pitched 23 years. Um, he's a uh, uh, battled alcoholism um, through his life and, and now stands up and proudly talks about his sobriety and the difficulty of which and how he fell into it as a young man and the lifestyle that baseball players live. Um, going out after games and starts with just a few beers here and there and his home of Nicaragua, you know, famous for, you know, high quality rum and how that just at 17 years old being with the older players on the national team and, and how it caused him uh, to not have quite the career. And when he finally realized it, he was able to compete at the age of 44 um, so his career was 22 years old to 44 years old. Um, he signed in 73 for $3,000 with the Orioles um, and last 23 years in the big leagues. But the stat, Ray, that's the most amazing. And I always, whenever I introduce him at an event, I always lead with this one. He pitched in his 23-year career a total of 3,999 and two-thirds innings. And I always said, you couldn't pitch one more out to get to 4,000 <laughs> career innings pitch? What the hell happened? <laughs> and he goes, no, and he'd always answer it. Nobody ever told me I was at 3,999 innings to be able to go finish out an inning. I have no idea. He goes, I don't remember that last game. I think it was with Atlanta um, after he left us because we had him when he was 40, 41, and 42. So he pitched uh, um, with Seattle at, at 43 and Atlanta at 44 years old. He goes, I don't remember what happened, but yeah, <laughs> imagine that. He finished with 3,999 and two-thirds innings. One more out. One more out. <laughs> One more out. I I always just kid him about that big time. So, but he's known obviously, right, for Game Six, winning the Game Six of the American League Championship Series at Seattle against Randy Johnson. You know, Randy Johnson was eighteen and two that year, had struck out almost three hundred batters. Um, I looked it up. Uh, he struck out. He pitched two hundred and fourteen innings. 
and struck out 294 that year. Um, and we got to him in game six, and mostly because Dennis Martinez pitched seven shutout innings. Julian Tavares pitched the eighth, and Jose pitched the ninth. You know, that's the game Kenny Lofton um, scored from second. Remember that? Scored I do. from second on the wild pitch. And right after that, you know, they're so flustered because Ruben Amaro scored right before him on the wild pitch. He was at third. Lofton comes all the way around from second to make it three nothing. Lofton had actually uh, had an RBI single in the in the fifth inning, I think it was, to put us up one nothing, because Randy Johnson hated Kenny Lofton and would throw at his head all the time, all the time. And for Kenny to get an RBI single off him and then score from second, and then I think it was two batters later because Randy was so flustered by Erga Homer to make it four nothing. And that's what the ending uh, score was four nothing in game six on the road. Um, you know, we're headed to the world series for the first time since 1954. And Dennis Martinez was uh, the man on the mound in a, in the big game, game six that uh, did it for us. Can you tell he loves his guardians? That's going back <laughs> 30 years ago. And the guy remembers every pitch. And well, you got to remember that. those at least. Those you got to remember. If you don't remember those, uh, <laughs> a lot of it all blends together. When it, like when Hammy and I are in the press box chatting, we'll sit there and go, "Was that ninety four or ninety six? You know, we, we, it, it all just runs together. But that one, you just need to uh, look up a box score, and then it all just comes back at you. Senior VP with our Cleveland Guardians, Bobby DiBiasio. Hey, Bobby, he does it each week with us. We appreciate his time. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Thank you, Ray. Always fun. Go Guardians.